We hear a lot these days about federal agencies. The EPA, the FCC, the FDA, the USDA, and just about any other combination of letters you can think of. These agencies issue rules. As of a few years ago, there were about 185,000 pages of rules in something called the Code of Federal Regulations. These regulations raise a whole host of policy and legal questions. But agencies don't just issue regulations, they also enforce the law. And it turns out that enforcement raises almost as many difficult questions as issuing regulations does, such as, at what point can Americans go to court to defend themselves against agency enforcement action? That's the question Mike and Chantel Sackett from Priest Lake, Idaho, took to court when the EPA attempted to fine them for building their home on top of what the EPA claimed was wetlands. The Sacketts had started the initial stages of their home construction, basically taking out the soil that was there, bringing in new soil that would be more appropriate for building a foundation for a home, more of a gravel base. And shortly thereafter, agents from the EPA and the Army Corps came unannounced onto the property and suggested to the Sackett's work crew who were doing work on the site that morning that they should probably stop doing what they're doing because in the opinion of these officials from EPA and the Corps, they were violating the Clean Water Act because they believed that there were wetlands on the property, that these wetlands were subject to federal regulation under the Clean Water Act, and that because the Sacketts hadn't obtained a permit to do any work in those wetlands, their home construction was illegal. We're talking about a piece of land near Priest Lake in North Idaho. The EPA says that land is federally protected wetland under the Clean Water Act, but the landowners disagree. Now Agencies carry out what the law says. Uh, so in this case, we have the Clean Water Act that's supposed to protect the waters of the United States from pollution and maintain water quality throughout the nation. Uh, but it doesn't enforce it by itself. Uh, it requires somebody to go there and do something about it. And so we have agencies, the Corps of Engineers and the uh, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, who are supposed to write regulations and then enforce those regulations by going out and finding people who are violating the regulations or violating the statute directly. So the government wants to take care of our country's waters, and they've asked EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to do that. The wording of the Clean Water Act, though, is a bit vague and open to interpretation. Now the rub is, well, what is a regulated water? The text of the statute says navigable waters. And the question is, what does that mean? Which waters are covered by this? Is it my swimming pool? Uh, is it a puddle? Uh, is it an isolated wetland? Is it a wetland that's adjacent to a navigable water? What is it? And that's not clear under the statute. Wetlands are really important. Different kinds of wetlands serve different purposes in terms of mitigating flooding, where you cut off wetlands from tributaries and from streams, you get more flooding uh, because wetlands soak up that excess water uh, and keep it from flooding areas that we don't want to have flooded. It's also good in terms of being habitat for uh, various species. A very significant percentage of endangered species uh, live or have a critical uh, life functions in wetlands. So from the view of the EPA and the Corps, when the Sackett's construction crew, with their construction equipment, brought in the dump truck and dumped the, the clean sand and gravel onto the property to form the base for the foundation for the home, that that qualified as a discharge of a pollutant. And according to EPA and the Corps, the alleged wetlands on the property themselves qualify as, quote, navigable waters or waters of the United States because of alleged connections that the site has, arguably, to other traditional navigable waters. So EPA determined that the Sacketts started construction in their home on top of some wetlands, and they did so without seeking a permit. When the Sacketts refused to restore the area back to the way it was, the EPA issued a compliance order. And it says that the people uh, who don't comply with the compliance order uh, can be subject to a, a fine of $37,500 a day, uh, which is a lot of money. And so, uh, not just with this compliance order, but as you can imagine with compliance orders generally, they have a tremendous coercive effect. 
because for the vast majority of Americans, seeing that sort of potential liability really produces no options. That for most people, the only option is to try and do exactly what the agency does, to say that they should do, and to uh, comply and avoid any sort of catastrophic financial penalty. On top of the compliance order, the EPA refused to have any sort of hearing that would examine the facts of the dispute, leaving the Sacketts without a chance to explain why they thought the EPA was in the wrong. And so they say, well, we think you're wrong, EPA, and if you won't give us a hearing, we're going to go to court. And they do. They go to court, and they, they sue under the Administrative Procedure Act to try and get a court to say, look, EPA, this is not subject to your jurisdiction. It gets worse in the sense that after the Sacketts filed their lawsuit, EPA took the position that they didn't even have the right to file the lawsuit, that their compliance order was not uh, agency action that's subject to judicial review under the Administrative Procedure Act. And so not only did the Sacketts have no administrative recourse, but as far as EPA was concerned, they had no judicial recourse. They really had no recourse at all except to comply with the order. The Constitution guarantees everyone the right to due process, which includes the right to defend yourself in court against government action. So was EPA violating due process by telling the Sacketts they couldn't challenge its compliance order in court? The lower courts ruled against the Sacketts. The case did not go well for them at first. Uh, they lost in the district court, they lost in the court of appeals. In both cases, the, the, the courts said, well, you know, generally speaking, you can get judicial review of agency action. But the Administrative Procedure Act has an exception for laws where judicial review uh, is precluded by statute. And here, EPA had said, well, look, the Clean Water Act authorizes us either to go to court in order to get an injunction for somebody to do something, or to issue a compliance order avoiding court. And they said, because Congress provided these two different routes to enforcing the statute, they must have intended that the second route, the compliance order, wouldn't have to go to court to get judicial review. Yeah, we'd have to go to court to enforce the compliance order ultimately, but just once, just to enforce it that one time. And that must have been the intent of Congress. Their argument was that the compliance order was not a final action, even though on its face it represented what appeared to be a pretty clear adjudication that the Sacketts had violated the act and that they would be subject to significant penalties if they didn't immediately comply. But another part of their argument from EPA was that Congress couldn't possibly have intended to allow compliance orders to be reviewable because of these efficiency concerns. That if you allow anybody to seek review of a compliance order, it will hamstring the agency, it will be drawn into court, it won't be able to do the principal water quality and, and other tasks that Congress wanted it to do under the Clean Water Act. The Supreme Court ruled that the compliance order was final action by the government, therefore could be reviewed in court. The Supreme Court's decision against EPA was unanimous. Well, Mike and Chantel Sackett have been tied up in court in a legal battle spanning across four different presidencies. This legal battle made its way to the Supreme Court back in 2012. And the again, decision was Monday. unanimous. Justice Scalia wrote the opinion. There were two significant concurring opinions by Justice Alito and Justice Ginsburg. There's no question that uh, giving uh, people due process rights, giving them the opportunity to seek judicial review of agency action, those things are going to hamper, to some extent, an agency's ability to act. But I think rather than object to that obstructionism, I think we should celebrate it as a necessary uh, acknowledgement of the rights of individuals, that even under today's administrative state, administrative efficiency is not the paramount good that there are competing goods, and perhaps the most important competing good is the rights of individuals, their, their liberty interests, but also their property rights. I'm a pragmatist in the sense of uh, sometimes that's true. Sometimes the property rights uh, will be better than federal regulation, but uh, sometimes it's not. And in, with respect to wetlands, uh, I think history shows uh, that the uh, leaving it to property rights will not protect wetlands. Prior to the Clean Water Act, you know, 
two thirds, three quarters of all the wetlands in the United States were filled because it was economically more valuable to fill the wetlands than to protect them. So the individual property interest here in, in wetlands is rarely worth saving the wetland. It is almost always uh, to fill the wetlands, as it's in the case of the Sacketts themselves, right? Uh, even if the Sacketts wetland is not a jurisdictional wetland under the Clean Water Act, it just goes to show that filling that wetland uh, is, is the economic value of that property, not saving the wetland. After more than a decade, the Sacketts and the EPA finally appeared before the Supreme Court to decide the seemingly simple question, did they or did they not build on wetlands. The fact that they can even ask this question is a victory for the Sacketts, despite the many years it has taken to find the answer. The Supreme Court has again weakened the power of the Environmental Protection Agency. This time it involves wetlands. The court decided the agency's definition of wetlands was inconsistent. The ruling now says that Clean Water Act only applies to, quote, wetlands with a continuous surface connection to bodies of water that are waters of the United States in their